Hey, this is your favorite teacher speaking, Mr. Brzezinski, and I'm going to take you through a lesson in pages, and we are going to use pages to do a drawing today called Egg in a Box. First, let's scroll down to the doc and click on pages and open it up. When pages opens, I'm going to see the template chooser, and I'm going to choose to say blank document. That will be best suited for our Egg in a Box. As is the case with all good projects, what I need to do first is go to save it. So I'm going to go to File, click on File, and hit Save. The log box will open, and the first thing I need to do is make sure that I'm sending it to the right place. I don't want to send it to this computer. I want to send it to my server. So I click on this drop-down arrow on the right-hand side of the Save As box. See this drop-down? I click on this drop-down, and now I'm going to look for my name. Right here, it's going to be Student2. I need to click on Student2, and that's the name of the server. And then I need to find my name. My name is just below the Student2 server, right in here. Today I'm going to be Anissa Kim Abode. So I'm going to click on my name right here, and then I'm going to click on my documents. Now that I'm going to send it to the proper spot, now I can name it. And what I'm going to name it is my last name. So you type in your last name, and then your first name, and then hyphen egg, just like that. Okay, so you're going to type your last name, then your first name, hyphen, egg. In the case of any project, I will need to type the project name after it so that I don't get confused when I have more and more projects inside my server. Now that I have it named correctly, I'm ready to save. I can just click on the Save button at the bottom of this window. Let's take a look at what the finished product will look like. As you can see here, I have a box, and it looks like there's an egg inside the box, or a shape that looks like an egg. What I'm going to do here is, as you can see, I can drag the egg in and out of the box. It fits inside the box. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make this step by step. Let's get started. Anything else, let's open up an inspector. I will need to use this throughout the project to get the inspector open. You click right in the upper right hand side of your window, click on the inspector, and it will open up the inspector right here. If I click on the inspector again, it will disappear. So to open, I click on the inspector, and I can have this inspector open at any time. Okay, so open, close it with the button in the upper right hand side. Let's keep it open for now. Let's start off by making the front wall of the box, okay? I can do that by clicking on shapes and scrolling down here till I see the square. So I click on the square and it shows up on my screen. As you can see, the square was created. Now I want to resize the square. There are boxes on the ends of the square in all four corners and in between. These boxes are called handles. To move the objects around, you click on the center and to increase the object size or to resize the object, you click on a handle. On the corners, you can go in both directions, up and out, and on the sides, you can either go up and down or left and right on the sides. I'm gonna use these middle ones because I want to specialize just one size at a time here, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the object two inches by two inches. So as you can see here, it says width or W. I'm going to make that two inches and then let go. And then I'm going to make the height two inches as well. And I'm going to pull it down until I have two inches by two inches as shown by the instructions right there. Make sure your box is two inches by two inches. If I click on the handle, I can then see again without moving it that it was in fact two inches by two inches. And now I need to duplicate this one shape. Rather than making a new shape and then having to resize it and put it perfect again, I can duplicate this one shape. Here's how to do that. Make sure that the, the shape is selected first off and have the handles around the shape. And then go up to the top of the window here and I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to choose duplicate. Or as you can see here, the hotkey is command D. So I can click on duplicate from edit and that will create a new shape, or I can do Command-D, and that will create a new shape as well. 
If at any time I would like to delete a shape that I've created, I need to click on the shape, make sure that it's selected by seeing the handles, and then I hit the delete key on the keyboard, or I can go to edit and clear. So I hit the delete key on the keyboard, or I can hit the delete button from the edit menu. Edit, delete, and that too will delete the shape. So if at any time I want to delete something, I can hit delete. If I do make a mistake, I delete the wrong object, here's how to get it back. I can easily undo this by going to Edit, Undo, or Command Z. I can undo many, many objects or many things that I have done. Okay, so I can undo this, undo the last deletion I made, undo the last deletion, undo, undo, undo until I'm back to where I want to be. So just remember that I can either hit Command Z to undo anything that I've done wrong, or I can go to Edit and Undo, and it'll tell me exactly what it's going to undo next. Catching back up with the lesson, now I need to position this box that I duplicated in front of the other box. So this will be my rear wall, and then I will take the other box and move it in front of the box. So I'll position them so that they're roughly halfway in between each other, as you can see here. Okay, Looks good to me. In front, over to the left. The sidewall of this box, as you can see, I need a sidewall right here. So what I'm going to do is go up to Shapes. I click on Shapes, and I need to make a strange looking shape down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this tool right at the bottom here that will say Connect the Dots. So I click on that tool. Here, instructions do appear at the bottom of the screen. It says, to draw a shape, click to create the first point. Click another location to create the next point. To stop drawing, click the first point of the shape or press Escape. Escape is in the upper left-hand side of the keyboard. So let's give this a try right here. As you can see, I click on the first edge, then I'm going to click up in the upper right hand corner right here. Okay, I'm going to retrace this line down to the bottom and click the bottom right hand corner of the back wall. And then I'm going to click the bottom right hand corner of the front wall. Just one click in each spot. One click forward, it'll bring it all the way to the front wall. And then, just like it says down here where it says to stop drawing, click the first point. I'm going to click on the first point. That was the first point I made. I click on that and it completes the shape. As you can see, the shape has handles around it telling me that I am, in fact, talking about that side wall. If I click outside of this side wall, I need to click on the line itself to re-select that side wall so that I can move it again. If I click in between the side wall, right here, it's not going to work because I'm not clicking on the box. I need to click on the line itself to reselect that wall. Before I move on, I'm going to try to make this wall complete by filling it in so that it actually covers that back wall. So first thing I need to do is make sure that it's selected by clicking exactly on the line. One click on the line will show my handles up and around the side wall right here. Now, going to my inspector. I'm going to click on the Graphic Inspector. Okay, there's many different inspectors here. That's a Document, Layout, Wrap Inspector, Text Inspector. I'm going to go to the Graphic or the Shapes. It looks like the Shapes, the Squares, the Circles, that type of stuff. I'm going to give that sidewall a fill now. And to fill it, I want to say I want to use a color to fill in that wall. I select a color and it automatically gives me that green. In a couple of minutes, we will actually change the color of the walls, but don't worry about changing the color now. Let's just stick with the standard green, and we'll decorate the box and the egg a little bit later. So what I need to do now is I need to duplicate this side wall so I can send it over to the left-hand side to create the wall that should be going back here. I do not make a single line. That is not going to work for this project. I need to move the entire wall, duplicate it, and then move another wall into the spec section over here. To duplicate this wall, again, I need to make sure that it is, in fact, selected. So click on the wall so that my 
uh, handles show up around the sidewall. I'm going to go up here to edit and select duplicate or I can use the command D function and that will create a second wall. Now that I have a second wall, all I need to do is take it and drag it into place. Although when I create something it comes to the forefront, it is the front object. I will now push it to the back. Watch how I do this. As you can see this wall is still up in front so I select the wall that I want to move to the back and then I slide up here to arrange. I click on arrange and I say send to back. Boom! And it takes it all the way to the back so that there is nothing behind or nothing behind this wall right here. Okay, so this is the furthest most object on the screen. Okay, so the box is complete. Now it's time to make the egg. Let's go back up to shapes. Here at shapes, I click on shapes and I come down here and I look for the circle. I click on the circle and it creates a circle for me in the page. I can move the circle anywhere I need. Let's now create an egg out of this circle. So if I click and drag open this area here, I'm going to make the egg two inches just like the box. So as you can see the height is moving up and down because I'm using the handle that is in the middle. Okay, not the edge handle but the middle handle. And I can move it up to two inches and let's go one inch and a half across, one inch and a half. And that will give me a nice oval egg shape. Perfect. Okay, now here's where the magic happens. It's very similar to moving this sidewall into the back. I take this egg, I click on it, and I drag it into place in front of my box. Now what I need to do is I need to get this egg behind this wall and behind the front wall. But I want to keep it in front of the left hand side wall and the back wall. Okay, so here's how I do it. I click on the egg, I have the egg selected by making sure I have the handles around it, and I go to arrange and I say send backward, not all the way to the back. All the way to the back will take the egg and put it behind the back wall, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit Command Z and that will undo what I just did. I'm going to move backward, send backward, and that will put me behind one of the objects up front right here and I say arrange move backward one more step and as you can see it layered it backwards okay if I continue it'll put it behind the next wall and then the next wall until it is the furthest most object in the picture but as you can see now it is inside the box it's in front of the back wall on the left hand side wall but behind the front wall and the right hand side wall perfect and now it is time to decorate the box. Let's take a look. See, I want to change the colors of the walls, okay? And I want the inside of the box to be different than the outside of the box. So I want to have a darker shade on the inside and a lighter shade on the outside. I want both the front wall and the right-hand side wall here to be the same color. So here's how I select both items at the same time. I click on one item and it's showing the handles around the box. Now, holding down the shift key on the keyboard, listen carefully, holding down the shift key, find the shift key on the keyboard, hold the shift key down, and now click on another item. If I click on the right-hand side wall, as you can see, now there's handles not only around the front wall, but also the right-hand side wall. Now I can change the color of both walls at the same time take a look at this. I go over to my inspector and I'm again in my graphic inspector as you can see here. I'm, I'm here with the color fill and it shows me the same color. I can click on the color right here and it opens up a color inspector. Again I can make, sh make these inspectors disappear by clicking on the upper right hand side of the window. As you can see here's the colors. Color comes in, color goes out. Inspector goes in, inspector goes out, but I want to have both of them open at the same time. So, I now have a color. I can choose any color in any different way that I want. Okay, I got a, a bunch of different ways of color. I got some colors here. I got different palettes here. I got a crayon box over here that will show me all the standard crayon colors. I also have a pinwheel right here that now I can drag across 
this little dot right here, and I can change the color. As you see, as I drag the dot, the color is changing in this box and also on the two sides of the box right here. So I can drag it and pick any color I want. Millions of colors to choose from right here. So go ahead and pick a color. And now let's change the back two walls or the inside of the box. So if I click out of the object, let's click out and now I can click back on side the, inside the object and I want to select this left hand side wall. I click on the wall and then I hold down the shift key once again holding down the shift key I can click on the back wall and now I have both walls selected the left hand side and the back wall and you can see I have my color fill again I click on my color fill and it says what color do you want to make it and now I can change the color right here if I want to change it here or I can choose one of the standard crayons and I choose usually a darker color on the inside of the box because the inside is obviously not going to receive as much light as the outside so I'll choose a, diff a darker color right here and now I'm going to work with the egg let's move on now click on the egg and let's decorate the egg I want to do something funky with this egg here. So I click on the egg. I have the handles up around the egg. Go to the graphic inspector. And I'm right here. Graphic inspector. I click on the color. Click on the color. I say you want to change it. But you know what? Let's not do a color fill. Let's go back to the graphic inspector and say I want to do a gradient fill. Let's click on gradient. And now I can choose two different colors for it to be faded into. I could choose a top color, a bottom color, and the angle that it pitches at. So let's choose one color. Let's make this egg funkier. Boom. I like it. I'm liking it. I'm digging it. Now, I'm going to go down here and choose the other color. Let's make it dark. Let's make it darker, darker. Try something funky here. Try to get up in here, make it dark, nice and dark. As you can see here, I drug this lighter, darker. You see the egg changing. Okay, so now I have a nice little gradient. And also, if I go back to the other inspector, the great, the graphic inspector, I can change the angle at which the shading is or the gradient. Okay, now that I have the egg, I can see that the egg fits nicely into the box and that it is shaded and gradient. Completed your task for today and it's time to turn it in and save your work. So let's make sure we save our work here. Let's scroll up to the top of the page. Let's click on file let's select save or you can do the command s and it now has saved my work back to the original spot that I asked it to save it to on the server so it went right back there and it saved the file now once I'm finished let's quit out of pages and prepare to drop the file into the Dropbox so I can quit out of pages Apple Q and now to drop it into the Dropbox, I need to have two Finder windows open. One that has my file and one that's showing me the Dropbox on the server. So let's scroll down here to the lower left hand side and open up a Finder window. And now if I go to my server, click on student and click on my folder. And I saved it inside my documents folder. So I open up my documents folder and there it is the egg in a box is right there last name first name egg that's the project I want to turn in so let's make sure it gets to my server now I need to open up a new finder window I can do this two ways I can do command N on the keyboard hold down command key and press the letter N or I can come up to the top of the window here and say file new finder window right here boom Finder windows open side by side as you can see. 
I need to find Mr. Brzezinski's folder where I get everything and I turn in my work as well. So that is in the hand in out server. I click on the hand in out server and it's going to connect. The first thing I need to do is select my middle school, which is Nichman. It starts with NI. So it's connecting now. And three, two, one, bang, here it is, NI Nichman. I double click on it and here is Mr. Brzezinski's folder. I open up Mr. Brzezinski's folder and I select my grade level, which is grade six, open her up. And as you can see here, I have a Dropbox period six Dropbox that I'm going to drop it in. Now, if you are a period seven student, you are going to put your files into period seven. Depends what period. So stop, think about it. What period are you currently in? Is this your first related arts? You're in period six. Is your second related art of the day? You're in period seven. And I'm going to take my file, last name, first name, egg, from my documents folder, from my server, and I'm going to drag it right over top of period six, Dropbox, and let it go. So I click, I drag, I let go, and right here a message shows up, and it says, you can put the items into period six Dropbox, but you will not be able to see them. Do you want to continue? Yes, that's okay, because I'm sending Mr. B a copy. That's what I want to do. I want to click OK, and boom, it shows up on the overhead projector. I then check it on the overhead to make sure that I did, in fact, turn in the egg in a box. And then I'm done. I'm done for the day. How do you like that?